So today we are going to be graphing parabolas. And all of our equations today are going to start out in standard form. And what we need to do is we need to convert the standard form into vertex form so we know what the parabola is going to look like. Because when we have it in vertex form, it'll tell us exactly where this parabola is going to shift to and how much it's going to be stretched. All right, now in a previous video, I showed you how to do this using the completing the square method, but it only worked when there was a one in front of x squared, or there was no number, which means there's one in front of x squared. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do it when there's an actual coefficient other than one in front of x squared. For example, two, or in my second example, three. All right, it, it's a little bit more complicated, but it follows basically the same steps. All right, so let's do this first one. Y equals 2x squared plus 24x plus 67. All right, so just like last time, my first step is I'm gonna put parentheses around my first two terms that have the x squared and the x in them. All right, and next step is I wanna factor out the number in front of x squared, meaning I want to get two on the outside of the parentheses. All right, so in order to do that, I'm going to divide everything in here by 2 and put the 2 on the outside. All right, so 2 times what gets me 2x squared? Oh, x squared, because 2 times x squared gets me 2x squared. 2 times what gets me 24x? 2 times 12x gets me 24x. And then I'm going to drop down my plus 67. So notice what I did. I basically just divided each of these terms by 2 so that it'll be on the outside of the parentheses. And now I have x squared with a, a coefficient of 1, basically. All right? Now, my next step is to complete the square for the stuff in parentheses. All right? So this is going to be a lot like what we did before. So I'm going to take the number next to x, which is 12, and I'm going to use that formula. Divide it by 2 and square it. 12 divided by 2 is 6, 6 squared is 36. So what that tells me is I need to add 36 inside of this parentheses to make this a perfect square, all right? But as we learned last time, you can't just add 36 to an equation because if you do that, it's going to ruin the balance of everything. So if I'm going to be adding 36 to the right side of this equation, I also need to subtract 36 from the right side of this equation, otherwise my equation's all unbalanced, all right? So I'm also gonna subtract 36 on the same side, okay? But one thing you really need to pay attention to is that this 36 we're adding is in parentheses and being multiplied by two. So technically, we're not really adding just 36 to this side of the equal sign. We're adding 36 times two because we stuck it in the parentheses. So when I subtract the 36, I'm not just subtracting 36, I need to subtract 36 times two. All right, so let me simplify this or rewrite it so you can see exactly what we did. All right, this plus 36 is now inside the parentheses. Oops, 36. And then on the outside, we've got the plus 67, and we've also are subtracting 36 times two, which is 72. All right. And now, the whole reason we added the 36 in the parentheses because this is now a perfect square. So now I can rewrite that as a perfect square. And what perfect square is it? Well, we know there's an x there. If we take the term next, uh, the coefficient next to x and divide it by two, I get positive six. So I know this is x plus 6, quantity squared. All right, so I just took that and made it into a perfect square. Now on the outside, I've got 67 minus 72, which is minus 5. And would you look at that? I am now in vertex form. Notice, my vertex has been shifted to the left 6 steps and down 5 steps. And my parabola has a vertical stretch of two. And now I can actually graph this because I know exactly where it's gonna be. So, shifted six, down five, there's my vertex. And with a vertical stretch of two, that means this pattern right here, this is my y equals x squared, by the way, 
everything's going to be stretched up vertically by a factor of two. So see this one point over one? It's going to be over one up two instead of up one. And this point here is up an additional three. So over here, it's going to be up double that. So it'll be up six. All right. And then we know it's symmetrical. So I'm just going to repeat it on the other side and try to draw it as smoothly as I can. There's my parabola. All right. So the key to this whole thing is completing the square inside these parentheses, but remembering to keep your equation balanced, we have to subtract off that amount. And remembering that because it's in parentheses and being multiplied by two, we have to subtract off the amount times two. All right, let's see a second example so that way we can get the hang of it. Here we go. Y equals three X squared minus 12 X plus five. All right, step one. Parentheses around my first two terms, my x squared and my x term. All right. Step two, let's factor out the number next to x squared. All right, because we really want just x squared by itself inside the parentheses. So I'm going to factor out that three, OK? Three times what gets me three x squared? Three times x squared gets me three x squared. Minus three times what gets me 12x? Three times four x gets me 12x and then I'll drop down my five. All right, that step looks good. Next, we need to complete the square. So inside the parentheses, the number next to x is negative four. So I'm gonna take that number, divide it by two, and square it. Negative four divided by two is negative two. Negative two squared is positive four. So what that tells me is inside the parentheses, I need to add a four in there. But of course, I can't just add four to this side of the equal sign. I also have to subtract it off over here somewhere. And then also, don't forget, this four that we added is in parentheses times three. So when we subtract off the four, we have to subtract off the four times three. All right, so we're basically adding 12 here. So we basically have to subtract 12 here. All right, so let's see. What ends up happening? Well, I've got that three times all this stuff, x squared minus four x and the plus four. And on the outside, I have plus five and minus 12. All right, now, the whole reason we added the four in the parentheses is so we could complete the square. So what perfect square is this? Well, we know there's an x here. And the term next to the regular x here is a negative 4. So if I divide that by 2, I get negative 2. So I know this factors as x minus 2 squared. Now, on the outside, we've got plus 5 minus 12, which is negative 7. And look, we are done. That is in vertex form, and now we can graph it. All right. So I know my vertex is going to be shifted right 2 and down 7. Right 2, down 7. And it has a vertical stretch of 3, which means all these points are going to be 3 times as high. So instead of the next one being up 1, the next one's going to be up 3. And then after that, the next one's up 3, so I'm going to multiply that by 3. So it's this next one's going to be up 9. So you can already tell this is going to be a very, very stretched out parabola. I'm going to repeat it on the other side because it's symmetrical. And I'll do my best to sketch it in, but it's kind of hard to sketch in these super tall ones. It's not bad right there. All right. There's a sketch of my parabola. All right. So notice it's not that much different to complete the square when you have a number next to x squared other than 1. But you do have to remember to factor out that number, that coefficient next to x squared. And then when you add in the number in to complete your square, don't forget that number has to be multiplied on the outside when you subtract it off the same side of the equal sign. All right, so there's a lot of stuff going on there, but it's really just one extra step compared to what we did before. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also, subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.